Hi, welcome to Business Influencers. Hope everyone's having a great week. You found us here at the TellRadio.org Foundation, and we are so excited and where Business Influencers is today because of you, the listeners. We are committed to your success, and we're going to continue to bring in guests each and every week sharing their words of wisdom, insights, and most important, their experiences to help move your personal success and business to the next level. Again, we are all about experience. We're all about real situations that allow people like you, real people, to move yourself forward in a productive and healthy way. Today's show is being brought to you by Alumni Direct. They're a new social media community platform dedicated to bringing alumni together. This is a great opportunity to get together with people that you haven't engaged with in quite some time, perhaps meeting new people from your school, perhaps from a different generational type. This is also an opportunity that maybe perhaps you might land your next job or maybe a business partner in a future business. This uh, affinity pro- or excuse me, this uh, membership program also provides affinity programs that allow you to engage in insurance where you can get group rates, even if you're a solopreneur. So again, check them out, alumnidirect.com. There is no social media notifications. You get to go in on your time and be able to do the things that are going to benefit you and help others that you went to school with. Again, that's alumnidirect.com. Well, we're going to be talking about a fresh take on mindset. And as everyone knows, I am a big advocate of mindset. I've written an international best-selling book in the area, Master Your Inner Critic, Resolve the Root Cause, Create Prosperity. And I'm going to really enjoy today the guest that we have that she is going to be sharing a lot of insight but not only just on from a mindset perspective, but how we approach it, you know, comes from the acting uh, area. And she's going to really talk about how we can apply this in our businesses and really engage on a higher level. And so we're going to be talking today with Amelia Randolph Campbell. Amelia is the CEO and founder of ARC Incorporated. She is a certified speaker with the Big Talk Academy, an alum of Speaker Salon in New York City. She spent over a decade performing as a stage and screen actor based in New York followed by years in leadership and sales coaching, and has taken her two unique careers to create a platform which elevates the personal development experience for leaders, positive disruptors, influencers, and communicators. Her book, currently in development, subsequently courses empower people with her groundbreaking methodology to interrupt and completely reimagine behavioral habits, releasing all limits on life. And finally, I just found out she's also going to be doing a TEDx talk here shortly here in April. So again, we encourage you to check that out once it is available. And without further ado, we welcome Amelia Randolph Campbell to the show. Amelia, how are you doing today? I'm so well, Chris. Thank you very much for having me on. I, I love this show. Um, the work that you do. We are so happy to have you. And so Amelia, uh, we love the mindset here at Business Influencers. We feel that you know, the mindset is the foundation to anything that is worth striving for in, in terms of how it impacts our confidence, our self-esteem, our decision-making, our communication, ability to take risks and follow through. I always like to think of it as like the foundation to a, a beautiful dream home that you're looking to build. Talk about what mindset is and from your perspective and your experience, how it can really reshape how we interact with other people ourselves and and create success in our business and lives. Absolutely. I mean, I believe it's everything. And I love studying mindset from every angle. I love the way you come at it. That's one of the best parts. There's as many ways to come at mindset as there are brains out there that have it. Um, And there's endless discoveries to be made there. So, you know, the mind is just, it's so shaped and influenced all the time. And my favorite thing to remember is that we're so much more in charge of how our minds are shaped than we realize. And, and the opportunity to bring a deeper level of consciousness to your mindset. I think the first step to mindset is bringing consciousness to what your mindset currently is in the first place, you know, and then figuring out where it's got maybe some weak spots or habitual areas where it's held back. Yeah. I always, would those be like limiting beliefs? Cause I know Those were the things that held me back in my first 30 years of my life. Absolutely. And, you know, limiting beliefs, they come from somewhere. You know, it it comes from what we experience 
we believe and what you feel, you believe things around those things. And, and no matter what your current thinking uh, is a habit yeah. and whether it's in, in a good habitual place or not, it's most likely a mix of all kinds of things. And it definitely takes practice every day. Your, your mind is absolutely a muscle, just like any other muscle in the body and, and the way you're using it or not is completely determining your state in the world. And it's actually really, really good news. Um, Cause I think a lot of people uh, tend to feel a little out of control or unmoored in their life. Um, like they don't have a lot of being in charge in the driver's seat. Um, and it's interesting. Something I was talking about just last night uh, with a colleague was the difference between being in charge and being in control. And I think we try to control what we're thinking, right? We tell our minds to think certain things, or we're telling our minds also to think certain things when we're reacting to something. And I think the, the idea of being in control of something, first of all, there's no such thing as being in control, actually. Um, it's, I think a really good mindset fosters a state of being in charge. Um, and I realized, you know, if you're in the state of being in control, what you will do is react. But if you're in the state of being in charge, there, there's a flexibility in that. There's more capacity in that. And in that state, you will respond. And both things have you much more in the center um, of your mind in a consciousness place and an ability to observe and then an ability to choose. And all of those things um, come from having a, a solid mindset. Um, I also like to say mind flow. Like mindful and mind flow. I like that. You got my, some advice. Trademark that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? So one of the things I love what you said, uh, you know, uh, Milia, is you talked about states, right? People have different states. And we're not talking states like where, where we live, but states of being, like how we think, you know, are we, it can be experienced through different moods. Are we angry? Are we upset? Are we joyful? Are we peaceful? Are we calm? It, it's how are we showing up in those states? Do you feel like a lot of times people feel like those moods or emotions, we don't have any control over them, but, but, but is that really true? Do, can, do we have control over our, our moods and, and, you know, we get to choose, even if whatever's going on, we can change that. You can change it. Often. This is one of the core pieces of my work. I help people get to a better state and uh, you can change it. It's difficult if you haven't paved the way, so to speak, in advance, you're not going to be able to change something on a dime, maybe because you're just already too in it. But everything is great news because you're learning from every moment anyway. It's about, you know, stopping and surrendering and just observing what you're actually feeling. A lot of people are, are very out of touch with even what they're feeling. You know, part of the problem is we just go going all the time and not, we don't even know how to take a moment. And I used to be that way. constantly. I was uncomfortable if I wasn't just like a hamster on moving around. Yeah. I would even try to take a rest or a break or, you know, a meditative moment. And that would just, I actually became incredibly frustrated in that. I was like this, I'd rather just be doing something, but it, it wasn't allowing me the space to really be conscious of, of where I really was. And therefore I wasn't having the ability to choose where I really wanted to go. So I help people just connect to themselves and through the actor's mindset and actor's tools, I help them find, I use this work for good, right? Any amount of this could be used for bad, like twisting your state to a, to a worse one. But uh, it's, it's all for good because I believe everybody really just wants to feel better. We want to feel relief when we're twisted up in a painful moment and all the painful moments absolutely serve us and will always come. But we need and we crave the ability to be able to move past them in ways that they're meant to serve us instead of get, get stuck in them and punishing in them. So I teach a lot about perspective and gaining different perspective. I think it's really helpful to, and to think the way an actor does. And to be very clear, I don't teach people how to act. And, you know, a lot of people think acting is putting something on. And in some cases you can look at it that way, but what it really is at its core is ultimate truth telling and achieving ultimate presence from which you can really connect first to yourself and then to others and then really influence and again influence yourself 
from that space and then influence others as well. And then you're feeling better in your life, you know? So there's certain things that, that you get to leapfrog uh, over that are in our daily habits that if you're thinking like an actor, one small example is how we think about um, time and circumstance and the judgment that we have around that. So just to put a quick example, you know, in real life, something happens to us. Maybe I'm just going to say that it's not a good thing. We don't like it. In real life, I think a lot of our default programming is to be external about it. We're looking at that circumstance that happened to us, we feel, and we tend to think, and I know this just from such experience, is you tend to feel, well, now I feel bad because that thing happened. In order for me to feel better, this thing must change. If that changes, then I can feel better. And there's, I understand the logic to that. And that's really like a gut reaction. But ultimately, the cool thing about how actors think is that they've been given this story that's been written by someone else. They're in a story and the actor knows they can't change that story. Someone else wrote it. You don't mess with, with the playwright or the screenwriter um, for the most part. And so it's, it's really cool because they don't spend any time focusing on changing the circumstances. Mm. Already they get to leapfrog over that. No focus goes there. Focus is so important where you're focusing. So they jump over that and they're the first thing they focus on is not changing the, the thing that happened, but changing, asking questions about how they can change within the circumstance that has happened, which we often don't get to that, that kind of way of thinking at all in real life. Um, and so immediately they're out of judgment. They're in creative curiosity mode. They're asking open-ended questions. Often, you know, we ask questions, but they're they're already closed. They're like, well, why didn't that work? And questions are like mirrors. So the answer comes back. It's telling you exactly why it didn't work. But if you ask a question and said, well, how can this work? Then your mind goes to give you that answer. So you can absolutely hack your mind with the proper kind of question um, and lead yourself through a pretty effortless, fun uh, process to a better state, even just through simple question asking, um, yeah. the way in which you're asking questions around a circumstance. I worry so much about time. Actors have that on their side. They have to get to the a certain place of performance and having made big choices and committed and then perform this thing. There's not a lot of time. Make it happen. They got to drop anything that is cloudy or noisy or holding them back at all. They say yes, and they make it happen. And and again, that's not something we tend to do in real life. We hem and haw, and there's just no time for that uh, as an actor. So that's another really cool way. You can pretend that that's the case. And if you decide to, to pretend something and you decide to imagine something, again, your whole system will follow suit. And you get to be in the driver's seat. You get to prove to yourself that you can create your own shift and you don't have to actually depend on any external circumstance. Yeah. And that's not to say things still won't feel hard or whatever, but you, you're you gaining these uh, muscles that help you feel more in charge. And that's what we crave. We hate feeling out of control. Oh, yeah. And just think about it. Like, I know when, and I didn't know this consciously, but back in the day, you know, I realized a lot of my anger, frustration, stress, anxiety was always tied up in the control I couldn't control. I couldn't control what was happening in my business, in my industry, the economy, uh, I couldn't control somebody else's communication or their behavior or their attitude or their emotions or course of action. And then I realized the only person, the only thing I got to learn, you know, focus on controlling is five things, my own communication, my mm. own behavior, my own attitude, my own emotions, that things are happening for me, not to me. And that was a game changer, right? Game changer. I would just love, cause, cause so many people struggle with you know, anxiety, stress, you know, and again, you know, it could be a lot of factors, what's going on in their lives and things could be triggered from the past. You shared a lot of things you hear just now about some of the things that you can do to make that shift. What would be, again, just to remind people that are listening, what would be like that first step that you would recommend somebody, you know, embark on this process to kind of make that shift, to sh learn how they, they can choose the states they, they want to show up in? Well, it's interesting. The TED talk that is coming up, the, the subject is a recipe for hope. And the answer to your question actually totally applies to what I was uh, 
looking to articulate there, which is a three-step place. If you're in a really twisted up moment, I think surrender is the first step. We think of surrender, I, I, or we tend to be programmed to think of so, the word surrender as a weak point. But I think I'm working on surrender and vulnerability. Those are actually two of your greatest strengths. So a willingness to surrender, which means just stop and observe and really look to do that without judgment, you know? And in that moment, there's some air that can come in and some releasing of the clouds around you. You're just observing, you're in surrender. And from that kind of place, you'll be there as long as you want. Just kind of float, you know, think about floating, floating your cork, you're holding down all your, all your stuff. You just let are willing to let go for a minute. Then you look to pick where your focus is going to go. Then you can choose your focus from a way less reactionary yeah. and way less judgmental point and keep that state of observance that comes in surrender, gently move it gently onto your focus. And again, you where your focus, you can tell by how you feel, if it's beneficial for you. And you're just continuing to look for that lighter feeling. That's all you're looking for right now. Like a lighter t- sense of feeling. And you're following that feeling through where you're focusing next, just thought by thought, not jumping into action. And then on, on the heels of those two, the third part is really being willing to befriend change. Because likely if you're upset about something, it's because something has changed in an unwanted way, or you're worried that it will, which is almost as just as powerful because the mind can't tell the difference (laughs) between imagination and what's not real, which is actually also could be your best friend. Um, But this, you know, we resist change. We resist it so hard. Uh, It seems to be very hardwired in us uh, to do that. And I think one of our great challenges today and always, but especially today is just befriend, befriend change. There's a force of change in our, in our lives. And if you just line up with yourself enough, then the change will, will always be taking you where you need to go um, and just be willing to imagine around what's happening and know that, that it will change again. You can think of a different time that you were in a ton of pain. Remember what after that, you know, remember how it did change. And, and cause we forget in the moment, like, yeah, we're like, oh, a it's rapid- out of sight, out of mind. It's like, yeah, people put ourselves right through that same thing that they did three years ago. And they're like, God, it all worked out. Why can't I just trust that? And you can pretend that you're talking to a friend, right? How would you comfort a friend in this moment? Um, so often we're so much harder on ourselves. Uh, and if you can just kind of step around and talk to yourself as you would your best, best friend in this moment, you know, you can help relieve yourself. Oh, that's awesome. I think that that is so spot on. What would be some other things like, you know, when you recommend any types of daily, like could be routine, it could be something that people can be doing to learn how to make these shifts and keep themselves present each and every day. Um, I'm a firm believer of, of meditation. Another thing in the past that I couldn't do, tried, wouldn't, I just wasn't, I guess, ready for it. I'm not sure, but um, I committed to a 15 minute meditation just literally with white noise in the background, focus on the noise, think about the tip of my nose, let the thoughts come and go. I could talk for eight hours on meditation, but that has a cumulative effect that really helps. Outside of that, uh, there is an exercise that I love called calling conditions. And I have a whole talk about this as well. And I'm I'm building courses on it, Uh, but it's a really simple technique where you just, you stand and you call what you're feeling word by word. And it's more challenging than you think, but the purpose of it, and you can do it just by yourself to a mirror. It's really great to do with a a couple of people as well, but you really just are bare and you stand there and you tell the truth about how you feel. You can be sitting by yourself. You can whisper it, but it's amazing uh, how much is there and how much we hold down and we hold stuff down because we're afraid of what else might be there. And we really do ourselves a disservice. So if there's uncomfortable stuff, you call that too. And, you know, you can call, you know, mad, then you get that mad can lead to more and more like fury and, but you're letting yourself feel it. And you're trying not to judge it at all. You're just calling it. And the brilliance about it is that if you really let them up and out, what's under there is delightful. 
like we have all emotions in us at all times. And if you're just in touch with the flow and they're always supposed to be flowing, right? And that frees up your energy and it frees up your mind. Um, and again, gives you that sense of being in charge and well-connected to yourself, which is what we're all really craving. So all of a sudden, up then can come sadness after the anger because you're sad because you're mad. And then maybe you get mad again because you don't want to, you're mad that you're sad, but eventually there'll be some silliness that comes up. There'll be whatever. It could be anything, foolishness, relief. You could start laughing, but you've, you've let up something and it's not to be all dramatic and, and anything like that. It's, it's just to be in touch with yourself. And again, when you really go through it, you feel your own shift and you're the one that's, that's created the shift. You've not depended on it from someone else. Uh, you've proven to yourself that you did change from something you weren't wanting to feel. Um, and you can practice just to help yourself on the daily, but then after a while, you can get more adept at then at choosing the emotions that you want to feel. And again, that's guided by imagination. Mm. You know, you imagine a feeling, you imagine why you want to feel that feeling. Yeah. If you're trying to feel something specific, the, the quickest way is to imagine why you want to feel that way. The focus goes away from the lack of that feeling currently to fostering that exact feeling. Cause like, Oh, I want to feel joyful. What does joyful feel? Like, oh, free. Um, you know, happy, excited, uh, abundant, you know, all the emotions around joyful. If you just let yourself imagine those feelings, you will begin to feel them. You'll have slowly shifted yourself or quickly to this other place. And then you're just observing it. You're letting it be, but you're not stuck. And you may fly right back to that. It's all habit. Those are great habits, but practicing flexing these muscles of consciousness and emotion with the aid of your mind and imagination really is terribly exciting and it's fun it's play yeah. really we don't play we don't play enough exactly it's certainly something that actors do we <laughs> play. well amelia you have shared such valuable information here and it is just so enlightening and we all we love to hear stuff about mindset it is so important in everything that we do and you just brought so much value uh your ability to be transparent we just want again extend a, our gratitude to you being here, sharing your insight and helping, you know, people that are out there, business influencers, those aspiring to be influencers, really to kind of go within and take what you shared with them and then allow them to draw their own conclusion, what that means to him or her to move their, their lot, their personal success in business to the next level. I would also like to let, you know, the, the audience listening and those listening later, where can they get in contact with you? Anything that you would like to share with them? Absolutely. The best place is, is my website. The website links to anything current that's going on, as well as social media, as well as my, my newsletter and my free ebook. Um, so that's called Pocket Perspective, a little book of instant relief. So those are some written tools uh, that can help you as well. But everything's on the, everything's on the site. Uh, so that would be um, AmeliaRandolphCampbell.com. Awesome. Well, we highly encourage everyone listening and those listening later, please check out Amelia's website. She is definitely somebody you want to get to know. She can offer a lot of great insight and in terms of mindset and other things that you're doing to move your business and personal success forward. And again, we want to thank you listeners each and every week joining us here, here at Business Influencers. Again, we are committed to bringing in experts and guests like Amelia to help from, from their experience, create that connection with you and getting you to decide what you like to do with it to move everything forward. It's so important that you, uh, you provide us your feedback. So feel free to send us an email anytime at chris at christophersalem.com. Your input allows us to really make those necessary tweaks and adjustments that best serve you and your business moving forward. Till next time, we're wishing everyone a great rest of your week and we will see you next week. Have a great day, everyone.